Hello to everybody out there in Periscope land. This is Brother Ed, and I'd like to welcome you to KJV Bible Scope. And we are on a Scope 103 of the Romans Overview series. So we're on the 103. That's it's pretty, it's pretty high up there. So, guys, we are in the middle of Romans 13. I'll say the middle. We're at the beginning of Romans 13. And we hit three verses and we're dealing in government atrocities because Romans 13 is dealing with governments in how we ought to conduct ourselves as Christians in the government, okay, uh, concerning the government. So we were hitting abortion was our last topic. And um, I just wanted to overview a few things and then we'll flip it to our next topic. So we did genocide. Then, then our next topic after that was abortion, and we covered that in the last couple of scopes. And now we're going to hit um, slavery, okay? Slavery in the Bible. Now, these are controversial ones, and I only wanted to cover at least three of these because um, people tend to use these arguments uh, more often than not. Um, when I go down to UCF, um, I'm always dealing with, um, with people that um, want to give these kind of arguments. So guys, we need to know how to defend ourselves against some of these arguments. And so I would say, make sure you're studied up in the Bible, knowing how to give, you know, they always ask you questions like, why is there suffering in the world? And, you know, um, why did God kill the Canaanites and the Amalekites? You know, if God's so loving, why did he allow that to happen? Why is there misogyny in the Bible, which that word's not even in the Bible? And um, you, don't, you don't find any of those concepts in the Bible. But they, they want to use their, their newly found philosophical comments and statements and ideas. And they want to attack God with their ever-changing evolution, the, evolutionistic theories, okay? So <laughs> it's completely absurd. God is the standard of all truth. God is the standard of all righteousness. God is the standard of all holiness, okay? Whenever somebody wants to attack God on a standard of holiness or righteousness, they make themselves look like a fool because they can't, they can't even make the assumptions without God. <laughs> and I'm not saying you need to believe in God in order to have the right assumptions. I'm saying because God exists, that's why you can make assumptions like that, okay? Attacking God in, in, a, in a moral sense, okay? For, for an atheist to attack God morally is completely and utterly meaningless, okay? It's meaningless. It's, it's nonsensical for an atheist or agnostic or anybody, any unbeliever to attack God on the basis of morality, okay? It's, it's completely meaningless. You, 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 all you can do is call somebody like that a fool. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 14, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God, okay? So I want to just close uh, off the uh, abortion part. Now, let's just close off the abortion part and we can uh, maybe have an introduction to the slavery uh, in the Bible. But first, let's go ahead and close out the abortion one. I kind of uh, stopped abruptly on the last scope. So um, I just want to make a few uh, points and of the overview of what we covered, and then we'll kind of end it there. So let's go ahead and do this. Abortion, that's, that's basically killing of babies, murdering babies, okay? Now, when does conception begin, or, or conception, when does life begin? People say at conception, but I, I beg to differ. I beg to differ before conception, life begins, before. Now, your next question is going to want to pinpoint where does life begin? That's what you're going to ask next, right? Now, we have a few verses we can look at. Now, let's go ahead and flip the screen here. We're going to look at Leviticus. Before, before we do Leviticus, let's do this really quick. Let's go to Romans 13 and read our premise of why we're covering government atrocities, okay? Let's go ahead and do that. Romans 13, 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For well, there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, 
but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Okay. So we were getting the reverse uh, or the uh, the paradox. I'll say paradox. The opposite. Let's just say. Let's use the word opposite. The opposite of Romans thirteen three, which would be for rulers are not a terror to good works. What we're saying is, are rulers always not a terror to good works? And the answer is that's not always true. But there is a general aspect of that truth that we can hold to that makes the Bible absolutely 100% correct on that aspect. Governments and rulers are placed on earth to refrain people from being in chaos. Now, there's an element in general truth to that. Even in Hitler's government, even in Stalin's government, if you walked around and tried to kill government officials, you tried to go walk, walk around and kill Stalin, he was going to put a stop to it. Because you just can't walk around and start killing government officials. So there was still a refraining, even though the government was wicked and immoral, there was still a refraining from doing certain, doing certain crimes. And that was to keep evil at bay. Okay? Now, there was still evil in the world. Governments, I mean, the gov look at the governments today. We still have proof that there's still evil in the world today, even though there's governments. But what are we dealing with? We're dealing with consequences. We're dealing with motives. We're dealing with uh, justifications. We're dealing with all kinds of things that we do every day in our lives. We condemn. We judge. We we justify, we, we forgive. We've got all these concepts in human life, okay? That's, these are all concepts in human life. And governments are there to keep at bay wickedness and chaos to the fullest extreme, okay? And that's why God has these governments and these powers that be on earth, okay? And, and we have that. No matter where you go, there's a government. You say, I'm going to go to my own little island. Well, well yeah, you, you go to your own little island. You're going to be the government of your own little island. And then you're going to have immigration laws because you don't want anybody to come to your island. That's that, that you don't want coming to your island. So, you know, you're, you're, you're going to keep, you're going to build a wall. You, you know, build the wall, right? And then you're not going to allow certain people to come, you know, and, 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 and there you go. You're going to make your rules, you're going to make your laws and only you can live, live on that land. As, as it's crazy because the same people that say, well, you know, I don't like the government are the same people that when they, when they want to live on their own stick of land, they're not going to live like they expect the government to, to treat people today. They're, they're not live. They're not going to live that way. They're going to have their own rules. They're going to, they're going to be their own tyrants. You see that? So guys, governments are there for a reason. And it's to keep at bay um, chaos and, and evil and, and so forth, okay, to, to the fullest extreme, okay? That's why. And, and that's proof. And that's proof of God. His, his omnipotence, his all-powerfulness, okay, his, his um, holiness and his justice and his righteousness, that's, that's a just God. He would have governments that would keep at bay evil. Not, not, not all evil. But keep at bay the, the, the chaotic and, and its degraded state, the worst level that evil could ever get. That the governments are there and they do put a stop to it. They do. So what about genocide? Well, we covered that already. And where are they at now? Where are those people that committed genocide? There's there's still, you know, maybe a few alive right now. But the ones that did committed that in the past, they were taken out. By what? By other governments. Do you see that? Okay, so let's go ahead and do this abortion and close this thing out. That way we can start on with a slavery topic, okay? So let's go ahead and do this. Um, Leviticus 17.11 For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon an altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that make an atonement for the soul. Now, where is the life of the flesh? Is, is it in the breath of life or is it in the blood? One more time. Is the life of the flesh, is it in the breath of life or is it in the blood? Now, the life of the flesh is in the blood. When does a cell se separated from birth become alive? 
Well, when blood flows through it. Okay, next question. When does blood flow through it? Well, the answer is at all times. All times is when blood is flowing through the embryo, through the cell, through the fetus. Okay, there you go. So at all times, that particular cell, whatever you, want to, whatever you want to call the baby at the beginning cycles, that baby has life in him or her because life of the flesh is in the blood. So when does, when does life begin? When blood is flowing through that baby. When does that happen? When blood is flowing through the cell. When does that happen? At all times. When is it okay to kill a baby in its earliest stages? Never. Because the baby is a living soul. Do you guys see that? God says, and I have given it to you upon an altar to make an atonement for your souls. So the life of the flesh that's in the blood is a living soul. Leviticus 17, 11. Let's do another one. Genesis 1, 26. Now, you might think that I'm going to go to Genesis and use the argument that life begins when the baby breathes. Well, isn't there oxygen in blood? So isn't the baby always breathing? Whether it's using its, its lungs through the, the, the air that's out here in the world versus the blood. Don't doesn't the blood consist of oxygen? Yes. So the baby's always breathing. So if that's your argument, that's a dumb argument because you want to make it to where, well, life begins when it comes, when the, when the baby comes out of the womb. So it's okay to kill the baby when the baby's in the womb, which is stupid, okay? Because the baby's always breathing. Now look, here, here's our next one. Human life, human lives are separate from animal lives. And God said, let us, see God speaking to himself in plurality, that's called the triunity of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, let us make man in our, see there we go again, our image, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, let us make man in our image after our, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, do you guys see that? Look what happened. Over the fish, over the fowl, over the cattle. That's over all the beasts of the earth, right? Including manatees, including puppies. Now, now look, look, look what happened right here over all the earth. Now, just in case you didn't know, you know, if it's all the creatures on the earth, well, there you go right there after the comma, over all the earth. Man's going to have what? Dominion. Putting a dis distinction, a separation between humanity that's made in the image of God, right? Made in the image of God, over fish that's not made in the image of God, over fowls of the air that are not made in the image of God, over cattle which is not made in the image of God, over all the rest of the earth which is not made in the image of God, and just to tag it on at the end just in case you're confused, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. That's just, just, just a little cherry on top. Every creeping thing. Well, what about the creeping things? Well, them too. But that would be engulfed in over all the earth. You see that? So we, we pretty much covered every creature of, of whether they're insects, whether they're mammals, well, whatever you want to call them. Whatever scientists want to call them today. Whatever so-called scientists want to call them today. Okay? It doesn't matter. We have dominion over all of them because we're created in God's image. Now, notice that it says, after our likeness. Now, that's what's going to be the difference. Animals were not created after God's likeness or God's image. Okay? Now, watch this. The likeness was lost in the garden. You go to Genesis 3, you'll see the likeness lost. Say, how did the likeness get lost? 
Well, when Adam ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because Eve took of it first and then gave to her husband with her, well, they lost the likeness. They lost the likeness of God. So, so what are you saying? Well, man still is, is in, created in God's image. All men are created in God's image. All women are created in God's image. But, but, the likeness is gone. Now, what happens? What happened after that? Well, man was sinful. And the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 7.29, the Lord hath made man upright, but he has sought out many inventions. So man desires to sin. And that's not the likeness of God. So, so there is no likeness of God within man now. Adam had a likeness to God at one time. Eve had a likeness to God at one time. Okay? Now, what happens when you believe and trust in Jesus Christ? What happens? Well, when you believe and trust in Jesus Christ, you are saved. Jesus comes to live within you. He comes to live within every saved believer, okay? Now, it doesn't make you a little Jesus. It doesn't make you a, a, a you know, a, a God, okay? Like some people falsely say, okay? You have Jesus living within you, but now you have to, now you have a, because your soul is saved, now your flesh and your spirit have to yield to the word of God. So you can be likened unto God in which you're trying to get the likeness back that was lost in the garden. The likeness of God. It was lost in the garden. Now, when we follow the Bible, come on, 2 Timothy 3.16, we obey the Bible, we're corrected by the Bible, we're reproved by the Bible, rebuked by the Bible. We line our lives up with the Bible. What is happening to our minds? Our minds are being transformed. Okay? Second one. We are being conformed to the image of his son, little by little. And then one day in Romans 8, at the rapture, we will be, in, in its full revelation, we'll be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ instantly. But right now, we need to, little by little, be conformed to the image of his son as we obey the scriptures all the time. Obey the scriptures as much as we can. And that's why we do Bible studies. That's why you go to church. That's why you fellowship. Because you need the mind of God. You lived your whole life in the mind of the world. You lived your whole life in the mind of the devil. You lived your whole life in your mind of your flesh. Now it's time to learn how to have the mind of God. And the only way you're going to get it, my friend, is opening up this Bible and actually reading it. Okay? That's the only way. <laughs> reading it, studying it, and applying it to your life, okay? So, human life, human lives are separate from animals, okay? You're not a byproduct of evolution. You're a byproduct of the image of God, okay? Now, you need to act accordingly, okay? First of all, if you're not saved, trust Jesus Christ. Second of all, if you trusted Jesus Christ, you need to get in your Bible and live your life for Jesus Christ, okay? Now, we did that. Uh, let's see, uh, Genesis 2, 7. Now, we already covered some of that. Um, let's, let's go to our next point here. Human life is in an unborn baby at any stage. Uh, let me say it again. Human life is in an unborn baby at any stage. Well, it depends on what stage the baby's in or, or the embryo is or the fetus is in before, you know, the, the, where there's no consciousness or whatever. It's just a slab of skin. You can just cut it out, cut it out, cut it out. And, you know, that's just pure ignorance. That's pure. It's, it's, it's absolutely murder. Absolutely murder. Okay. It's not guessing if it's alive. The, the Bible says this baby's alive. Human life is in an unborn baby at any stage. The unborn baby is a human child. Psalm 139, 13 to 16, we covered that already. Now look at, let's hit Jeremiah 1, 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Now I really, I really like this argument a lot. 
You say, what do you mean you like this argument? Well, here we have a truth about when does life begin? Life begins before I'm even formed in the belly. You see that? I'm not even formed in the belly yet, and God knew me. Which means I'm a living soul before I'm even formed in the belly. Wow. I never heard of that one, Brother Ed. Wow, that's pretty. That's I don't know about that. Well, that's what the Bible says. Read the Bible. You don't believe the Bible, do you? Well, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Which means life began. God can't know a piece of tissue. God can't know some dead skin. God can't know some dead organ. God knows me. He knows me that I am a human being. God knew me. He made me a living soul. The Bible says in Genesis 2, man became a living soul. So before I was even formed, God knew me and I was a living soul. You say, but, but wait a minute, that goes against Genesis 2, 7, brother Ed, uh, because Genesis 2, 7 says that people, people live after they come out of the womb and they breathe in their first breath of air. That's when they're alive. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're absolutely 100% wrong. And do you want to take that chance to be a murderer? Why would you want to kill your baby in the womb? When you don't even know. You don't know. And the Bible says that God knows. God knows when life begins. And it's before he even forms the baby in the womb. Before the baby's even formed. God knows the individual. But, but you say, but Genesis 2 says it comes, it's after. No, that's the formula for Adam. Adam became a living. Come on. We're, people always want to use Genesis 2, 7 as a justification to commit abortion. Let, come on, let's go ahead and do that. When, when God created you, did you come out of the womb or were you born as an adult? Adam was born as an adult. Now, when you were born, did you come out of your mother's womb or did you were you made out of the dust of the ground? So you can't apply Genesis 2-7 to all humanity. That is a one-time event that happened in Genesis 2. God's not making people out of the dust of the ground anymore. What we have is people being born from other people. Okay? So to use Genesis 2 as a justification to commit abortion, well, until the breath of life comes, the, the, the baby's not alive. Well, what do you do about the oxygen that's in the blood? We already said it er earlier in Leviticus 17, 11. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So you're telling me that that little embryo doesn't have any blood flowing through it? Now, if, if, the, if you say the embryo has blood flowing through it, does blood have oxygen in it? How is the baby breathing? Through the blood, through the oxygen, through the life thereof, Leviticus 17, 11. The Bible's true. Let God be true, but every man a liar. So we're going to believe the Bible. We're not going to believe scientists. And what do I mean by scientists? Science falsely so-called. Okay? Evolution. That's science falsely so-called. It's what we call science fiction. Okay? That's evolution. Now, why are you going to believe the, 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 the Hillary um, revolt against babies, why don't you believe the Bible? Life begins in the mind of God. That's when life begins. Come on. Life doesn't begin at conception. Come on. We're going to go deeper than that. I understand the argument, and I, I know the argument inside out. But, but guys, think a little deeper in the Bible. Go to Psalm 139. Read what it says. Before my son, before my members, God already knew me. How can he know feet, uh, a tissue? How can he know um, organs? God knows a soul. So to refute the Genesis 2-7 argument, Jeremiah 1-5. God already knows me. I'm not Adam. My name's Brother Ed. My name's Edward Worth, and I was born from my mother, and before I was formed in the womb, God knew me. And before you were born in the womb, God knew you. Oh, how precious are his thoughts of all of those that he's created. 
He has precious thoughts towards all people, saved people and lost people. But does he want lost people to get saved? Absolutely. And if you're not saved, does he want you to get saved? Yes, he does. Will he still send you to hell? Yes, he will. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to believe he died for your sins. He rose again the third day. You need to trust that. You need to believe on that for the salvation of your soul. And if you're saved today, stop thinking that you can, you can go to the abortion clinic and murder your baby in the womb. You didn't lose your salvation when you did that. But I'll tell you this, you killed your baby, you were a murderer. You were a murderer. And you need to repent. And God is willing to receive your repentance. God is willing. The Bible says God is not willing that any should perish. That's for, for lost people. But think about this. If you're saved today, God does not want you to perish in your body of flesh to be tried as a murderer. Okay? Now, our government doesn't try you as a murderer when you kill your baby, does it? I think that the government should try you as a murderer because the baby, the baby is a living soul. The baby cannot defend itself. The baby has no say. The, the baby's just relying on the safest place the baby could ever be in the mother's womb. And you're going to tell me that well, as a mom, I mean, I, I couldn't even fathom how a mom could say, well, it's just a slab of tissue. When you've got a living life growing within your womb. It's just, it, it, it's beyond me to understand that a mom should have natural affection for her unborn baby. Can, can you imagine, you know, way back in the days when, when you know, when, you know, in the 1800s and the 1700s, where when, when a woman had a baby and she lost her baby, you know, miscarriage or something. The, the, the woman would be so hurt inside. The woman would be so grieved and she, she would take that grief with her for the rest of her life, not just for a period of time. It's like the depression sets in, the, the mood swings set in. And it's like, I, <coughs> amen, amen, Keisha, right. It's just, it's so, it, it's just so affecting on the life of the individual, of, of, of the life of the mom. Because even though today they want to reclassify what an embryo is, what a fetus is, it's a baby. The Bible calls this thing growing within you a child. This thing growing within you, the Bible calls this thing growing within you a babe. B-A-B-E, a babe. It's not a slab of skin. It's not some organ growing within you. It's not free choice. Come on, free choice? When women say free choice... It means I can be a murderer if I want to be a murderer. Come on. Don't pro-choice that thing. Right on there, I am pro-murder. I can choose to murder my baby if I want to. Now you're saying it correctly, okay? That would be putting the shoe on that fits. And you wearing that shoe like it really is. That's reality. And you know what? I don't think that, that women should just get thrown in jail for killing their baby. I think the death penalty should be placed upon women that kill their babies. That's, that, that's rational, guys. That, guys, killing babies. Really? Killing babies. Just put them in jail until they, you know, five years and then they get parole? They killed a human life. Now, guys, I'm not going to be uh, sickening and everything. I'm not going to throw a bunch of, of aborted fetuses on the screen. I understand that may, a lot of you may have seen this stuff and it, and it makes you sick to your stomach. And I'd be so grieved. I, I, I'd have tears in my eyes. I, I probably couldn't even do the scope if I threw all those pictures up on the screen. I, I, I probably couldn't even finish the scope, guys. I, I don't think I could do it. It's just so sickening. It's so gross. It's just, it's, it, it is terrible. It's terrible. It is. And, and it's like a, their conscience is seared with a hot iron. The Bible says it. Their conscience is seared with a hot iron. You know, a person, a mom that doesn't have natural affection isn't normal. A, a mother that has, doesn't have natural affection needs help. They need help. They need Jesus Christ. They need Jesus Christ to save them from their sins, to take them out of that bondage of their wicked reasoning. And then getting in the Bible and then learning the correct way to reason out life in the womb, okay? That's going to be vitally important, okay? Um, we could sit here and give all the philosophical arguments against abortion,
But these women ain't going to change until they get saved. And when they understand the love of God, come on, think about this. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ <coughs> didn't have an earthly father. He didn't have an earthly father. And, and Joseph could have put her, her away privily. He could have privily put Mary away because that would be classified as a bastard child. Come on, that's not a bad word. Bastard is not a bad word. That's, that's a Bible word. If you use that word correctly, that's a child that has no father. That's a bastard child. Hebrews chapter 12. Read Hebrews chapter 12. You'll learn about if you are without chastisement, you would be bastards to God. And you know what God, You know what Hebrews 12 rebukes? Hebrews 12 rebukes that nobody that's a child of God is a bastard. So God doesn't believe in abortion. God doesn't believe in cutting out some tissue. It's, it's wicked. It's wicked. All right, guys. So what we have is a living soul. Even before conception, we have a living soul in the womb. So human life are separate from animals. Genesis 1, 26 to 29. Genesis 2, 7 to 23. Life has blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. All embryos have blood going through them. Leviticus 17, 11 and Leviticus 17, 14. <clears throat> human life is in an unborn baby at any stage, at any gestation of the cycle. The unborn baby is a human child. Psalm 139, 13 to 16, Jeremiah 1, 5, Luke 141 to 44. Okay? Now, God knew me before I was formed in the belly. I was already a living soul. And we already proved it. Okay? So, our final one. Human life intentionally killed is murder. Human life intentionally killed is, is murder. So, all throughout Scripture, murder is the intentional killing of innocent humans. Is regarded as a heinous sin. Exodus 20, 13, Matthew 19, 18, and Romans 13, 9. The law is restated in the New Testament saying you are not to kill. You are not to murder. Okay? So... <coughs> When you kill a human life in the womb, God classifies this thing as murder. Okay? Murder. Since abortion kills an innocent human being, it is nothing less than murder. All right? So I wanted to give those four points there. They're, they're kind of brief. They're kind of simple. And they're to the point. If, if you don't know how to defend your belief then those are some great four points to start with. And I, I, we, I mean, we couldn't get through every aspect of abortion, um, every aspect of murdering a child in the womb. I don't think we could ever cover all that. But I did a few scopes. I, I, I encourage you to go back and watch the other scopes. And uh, just, guys, look at these things. Be objective about this. Get in your Bible. Look at the verses for yourself. Know what you believe. Know where you stand. But other than that, guys, I definitely want to cover this. Um, I was going to get into the topic of slavery, but it looks like it's getting really late. I'm, I don't think I'm going <coughs> to be able to get to slavery tonight. But, um, but we did cover this closing of abortion. I did want to close this thing out, give you guys some good verses you can use to, to show that God is not, is not in agreement with killing babies, okay? So with that being said, I definitely need to have a little talk about salvation here. Um, Christ died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day. And Jesus Christ himself could have been aborted. Um, and can you imagine Joseph looking at Mary and just saying, I'll marry you, but you've got to get an abortion because that's not my child right there. And don't you, don't you think it's great that um, Jesus Christ was not aborted so that way he could be the savior of the world so he could die for sinners like me and like you so we can be saved from our sins you say but what about circumstance what about rape and all that 
Well, look, look at Jesus' circumstance there. Come on. What's going on in Joseph's mind? Well, did Mary get raped? Come on. You don't think that might have popped in his head? Sure it did. And if Jesus would have gotten aborted, then we would have no Savior. Now, obviously, uh, I mean, we're giving an, an, an impossible hypothetical here. Now, we know that that would have never happened because Jesus is the coming Messiah. And it's, it was written by prophecy that he would come. Now, we understand that. But what I'm giving you is an impossible hypothetical. If, if abortion was okay, then who would have more justification for abortion than Joseph? There you go. And, you know, praise the Lord, Jesus was not aborted. Now, look, Jesus came to this earth in those circumstances where he could have been aborted. And, and like I said, that's an impossible. I don't want to say he could have been. I mean, he, he wouldn't have been, but something would have been done. I, I know God's going to, everything had to go as planned because the prophecies, the prophets had said so. Okay. So, but in that circumstance, and you know that those, those thoughts could have been going through Joseph's head. And Jesus still came and he lived a holy, perfect, sinless life. And then he died on the cross for our sins and then rose again the third day. He did that for you and for me. He didn't have to do it, but he did because he loves us. And he didn't treat us as bastards. He didn't treat us as aborted fetuses. He treated us all as children of God. That's how he treated us when we were lost. He died for us as, as if we were children of God. Now, we are not children of God until we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. What I'm saying is that he died for us because he wants us to be his children. He wants us to be part of him. Okay? That's the point. Okay? He died for us as if we were all children of God. That's what I'm saying. Now, if you're not saved today, you need to believe that Christ died for you and rose again the third day. If you trust that and believe on that, you're saved forever. Not till the next time you sin. Not till the next time you do something really, really bad. Not till you join a government and commit a government atrocity and then you lost your salvation. No, you are saved forever the moment you believe and trust in Jesus Christ. That's very important that you know that. Now, if you repent towards God and put faith in Jesus Christ, you're saved forever. Now, if you're already saved and you went into the world and you lived your life in sin, turned your back on God, became an enemy of God, became an atheist, became an agnostic, became a Satanist, became a Muslim, whatever you became, you need to repent. You need to come back to God, not to get saved again. You need to come back to God, repent towards God. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's what you need to do as a saved person in rebellion to God. Number two, the other verse we're going to give. 1 John 2, 1 and 2, 2. Little children, these things write unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Okay? So the advocate for us is Jesus Christ. He will mediate between you and God, even if you've, you're in complete rebellion towards God as a carnal, saved person, okay? Jesus Christ will forgive you, and you can live your life in accordance with the Bible, and you can become a Christian. A Christian living in that victorious Christian life. I encourage you to do that. I want you guys to repent if you're in this thing and you you still got your mind made up that it's okay to kill babies in the womb repent of that garbage i mean don't kill no more babies don't kill no more babies. i had the counter up there the other night it was so grievous watching that counter and all those babies dying this year i was so grieved uh, guys don't don't kill no more babies let those babies live god, 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 those are god's heritage don't kill god's heritage all right guys um, thank you for joining me on KJB Bible Scope. I hope that if, if maybe if you did learn something new, that uh, maybe you'll, it'll take this, you'll, you can take this stuff with you and maybe teach others also and uh, just uh, help people. I mean, I, we can be hard on people and tear people down that have committed these acts. But guys, what they need is, isn't to give you all the arguments against abortion, okay? I mean, what, what they need is Jesus, okay? They need Jesus. They need to get right with Jesus Christ. 
They need to believe what he's done. They need to realize that they're sinners even before they committed the act of abortion, okay? They need to get saved. And when people get saved, what you'll find is once you have Jesus living on the inside, then it's easier to change the inside. And then later, the outside, the outward look of the person can change. But it's got to start from the inside, okay? All right, guys. Thank you for joining me on KJV Bible Scope. My name is Brother Ed. Sorry we couldn't have covered the slavery uh, part, but uh, we'll definitely cover that, Lord willing, tomorrow. And uh, I've got a lot of, uh, I, I've got an opening I want to start off with first. That may cover an entire scope in itself, okay? So I hope you guys catch me on the slavery, you know, government atrocities concerning slavery, uh, Romans 13, because we're doing it verse by verse, guys, Romans 13. But I've kind of hit it to the side for a topical. Hope you guys get in on that. Thanks for joining me. May the Lord richly bless you guys. Y'all have a great, great and wonderful evening.